Hey everybody, as you probably guessed, we're here for a Cintiq repair. Uh, so this time, uh, we're again working on a 22HD. Uh, this is actually a fix for two different problems. Uh, one problem that people have been seeing is the backlight is out, but they can see the background of their desktop or whatever. Um, this will fix that. This will also fix if it just doesn't turn on, period. And it's not because of the problem that I've talked about in the previous video. The kind of problem, because you know, there's two problems. One, where it doesn't turn on, but you can use the, 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 the pen and it'll still get pen input. That is an issue with the display, uh, the display board under here. This issue is if it doesn't turn on and it's not responsive to pen input, or if it turns on, but the backlight doesn't light. The problem, surprisingly, isn't, isn't to do with the backlight. The, the problem is actually a mainboard issue. So, we grab this one, this one's open, and right side up. So this is the main board over here. This problem actually fix it, uh, is, because right over here there's a, there's a transistor. Uh, it is labeled Q, I got some solder on it, Q20. Um, there is also, there's actually four of them. There are two over in this region, there's Q20 and Q18. Uh, and then over on the other side, right near the input, there is Q24 and Q14. Q14 is heading over towards the uh, towards this board, towards the towards the digitizer board. So those two, and then on the bottom, there's Q1. So you want to replace all five of those. The um, the part number is uh, it's a it's a FDS. 4435BZ. If you're ordering from China, it'll cost you about two bucks for 10 of them. Just gotta wait a month and a half. Or if you're ordering from America, it'll cost you about uh, six bucks for 10 of them. Uh, I just ordered a 10 pack from America and a 100 pack from China. So, um, yeah, because it's like 11 bucks for a 100 pack from China. Gonna do that. All right, so, because I, I expect to see more of these come in. So, um, Again, this, this fixes those two problems. Right now, I'm just going to replace one, I, uh, and you'll get to see the soldering process. This one, I uh, use a little bit more temperature and a little bit more airflow. So I've got my chips ready to go, chip right here, and the other chip right there. I have I kind of just work in the board because uh, you know I'm using low flow, hot air, and it's kind of easier to work with it raised up in the board rather than make your own contraption. Um, some people don't like that. Just make sure, you know, when you work on things that you're not like me and you take out the plug. Always take out the plug. Always take out the plug. I don't always take out the plug. It's bad. Uh, a way that you can confirm that is this issue, by the way, is if you um, test the voltage right over going towards the inverter. If it's less than 12 volts, you know for a fact that that one of them is dead. If it's like eight volts or four volts or something, you know that not enough voltage is getting over there. It's and if you've already tried replacing the power supply, it's definitely this. If you also go and test right at this capacitor, this capacitor over here. Am I showing this good? No. This capacitor over here, a little bit close. See the power is here. Capacitor over here. This capacitor is supposed to be at five volts. If you are getting zero volts or close to zero volts at this capacitor, this is the issue. Um, you can also tell if you go over to U1 over here. Am I showing this good? I'm showing this kind of okay. It's a it's a it's a little chip labeled U1. If you're if you have it so the power supply is on the bottom, second second um, pin from the bottom, second pin from the left on the bottom in this orientation. If you test that and you don't get 3.37 volt uh, 3.33 volts, then it's it's probably it's because it's somewhere somehow it's reporting back to this is over here which is the microcontroller chip and that comes off of uh, one of the pin the pin 18 technically pin 18 on the bottom is the one that tells it to power on the rest of the circuit and if that's so if you're getting zero volts here and you're getting zero volts there it's this is again that issue so that's a couple quick ways to just text see if, if that's the problem so you're supposed to get five volts here if you're getting zero that's the problem. You're supposed to be getting 3.3 volts at that pin to say that you should be powering everything. Um, 
I mean, honestly, I guess it doesn't really matter, but in this, it, it'll probably be off if, if that's the issue. Uh, um, unless it's unless it's exclusively that one that's failed, then it would just be the voltage over there. And maybe I'm over explaining. And if you flip it over and you go down the bottom, if you test the voltage at the point right here, this should be 3.3 volts. Um, if it's not, you probably you might have a different issue. But anyway, uh, right now we're gonna replace one. Let's see the soldering process. Uh, it's just gonna be an all-in-one video explainer and do it. And uh, so this one I, I actually already, oops, I already replaced Q20. I already replaced Q20 in this one. Um, so I'm just gonna be replacing Q18, Q24. Q14 and Q1. So this one right here is the one I'm going to do first. This one is Q1. So we got the big label over here. Q1's over here. There's only there's only a couple things on the bottom, so you shouldn't have a problem finding Q1. All right. So I have my hot air gun at uh, I again I use an 852D plus uh, by Yihua from China. It was 80 bucks. Uh, I have my hot air set to 400, about 450 degrees and I have the flow set to uh, about six and a half seven because I don't try to set it too high because otherwise you end up blowing little capacitors off the board I just like to make sure I got the orientation right because the ones I ordered don't have a really super clear dot on the bottom corner whereas the ones that come on the board have a very extremely helpful invisible dot as to what is pin one so I set it up in the orientation ahead of time. I make a mental note what direction the words are facing. In this case, Q1 is going to be in the same direction as the words on the label. So I know that when I put the label in, if I can read Q1 right ways, I can read the numbers on the chip right ways too. Uh, that's just my way of keeping track and checking later on that I didn't put it upside down. Sometimes I'll take a picture, but I've I'm pretty reasonably confident in myself at the moment, so I'm not going to do that. I will keep it in the correct orientation and put it off to the side. I'm going to use the hot air gun first. I have my soldering iron warming up to 373, and I didn't shut off my messenger. All right, here we go. So I'll just kind of blanket some hot air over it. You'll see when you're working on the chip that one side all four of the pins are connected to the same point, and three pins on the other side are connected to the same pin point, and there's one pin that's separated, and that one is like the control, the current controller pin, basically. Um, so pretty much the ones that are connected, you don't have, you can be a little sloppy on the soldering on those. Just make sure that the one pin that's separated is still separated. Make I do a quick connection test between that one. I mean, I don't recommend being sloppy, but you know. If you're new to soldering, you know, this one's not a particularly difficult job. All you need, I mean, you don't even necessarily, I mean, you kind of need a hot air machine. <coughs> Probably a slightly larger nozzle, so I wouldn't have to be making these motions around. Or I could use a, a nozzle that's more custom fit to it. But I'm using, you know, I can't remember, it's like a three millimeter nozzle or something. Actually, it's probably more like a 5 millimeter nozzle. But, I don't know. Just kind of blow some around the region. Keep it. Because this board is, um, this board's a 3 or a 4 layer PCB. Because uh, you can try to follow some of the traces and then it'll just be gone. It'll just be a dot on two sides of the board. And you'll be like, well, I don't know where that one comes out. That could come out anywhere. And it kind of just sucks. So, so that's why it took me a little bit to figure out diagnostically what was going on with these because I could not trace part of the board. And it actually kind of ended up just being a. Uh, I just kind of got lucky in figuring this out because I, I knew on one of the on the backlight issue that it was this, but on the totally dead board, there's really no there's no solid hint that this chip is dead. There's like no way to tell. Because the microcontroller shuts it down, so you can't do the same test that I was doing with the other. 
They also, for some reason, this, they must have used some really crappy stuff. So I like to go over and uh, sort of carefully, gently remove some of the garbage that spills off of it. It's like either the chips burn or they use some really crappy, really crappy um, flux when they put this together. And it just looks like garbage. Alright, so just chip that off a little bit because I don't know if it's going to cause a connection. Then I'll pull out my chip and then I'll drop it. And then luckily I remember the orientation that it's supposed to be in. Otherwise I would have just flipped it upside down. Now, is that even in the video? I'm not going to do that. Okay. So then over here, I'll change the orientation for the next one so you get a better view. So then we're back over here, putting it in. Dot in the top right. Oh, wow! Alright, so I just noticed there's actually a little dot on the PCB, a little white dot. Apparently an indicator as to which corner there's supposed to be a dot. I did not know that. I just looked at some of the other chips that's there for all of them. That is super duper helpful. So you may see right about there that there's a little, little teeny white dot. That is super great to know. Really bad job positioning this one. Oh boy. I'm not doing good at this one at the moment. Where is alright, give me a second. Gotta focus for a second here, everybody. Alright, so I usually kind of set it down on the pins. Everything's still hot, and then I push it down gently with my scissors, give it a little more of a blow, and then I take the heat away, move the tweezers down, ease up, check my pins are oriented properly, go over my soldering iron, now it's time for the soldering iron to shine, um, and I, I dab a little bit of fresh solder on there, do it. Don't do what I do. Do it somewhere away from the PCB. I use a metal soldering thing because that's... Did I just throw solder from there? Oh, shit. Alright, whatever. Alright, so do it away from your PCB, unlike me. Don't don't follow my examples. Or don't always follow my examples. Alright. So I'm going to take a little bit of solder. Go right up to it. Get, uh, dab a teeny, teeny, teeny little speck on there. Go right up to the pins, see if that made happy. Oh, well, it did. That one was happy. Alright, not quite happy. Dab. Dab. Little teeny, eeny, 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 bitty bit. And then dab. And then try to make them look pretty. Yeah. If it looks like it's shiny, you dab. Sometimes I go a little overboard. You don't need to go overboard. I like to make sure. I probably I'm just gonna leave that one sloppy because like I said it doesn't really matter. And on the other side, I probably put a little too much solder, but it's not gonna make a difference. Little dab, little dab, little dab. That side looks pretty decent. I wanna freshen it up before I do that. Because the top left one right now in this orientation is gonna be the uh, blown pin, don't want to contaminate, don't want to have too much solder for this one. This one right here. Bam! Perfect! Oh, I did a great job on that one. Alright. You can clean it up or not. You may want to use a little bit more temperature. I use 375. Um, so there we go. That ship's done. We've got three left to go. Look at the twist. The board's already heated up a little bit. Oh yeah, so I was trying to say it's a, it's a three layer board. That's why it takes so long to heat up. Because it's got you know three four layers of copper that's got to warm up and that can be pretty you know pretty heat absorbing pretty good internal heat sink there all right let's get a better position we can maybe follow this a little bit better this time around maybe take that stuff out of the way move that out of the way there we go. look at my shirt Good view, a little bit of good view. 
can't zoom on him. Can I zoom in? I can't zoom. Really? Can I zoom? Can I zoom? Oh, I can't zoom because I'm on the selfie camera. Alright, I'm gonna flip this over. Get you guys a better zoom in. 